you explain the role of campaigns in the eviction process? Uh, I think it's a quite important role in uh, the university as it's to uh, lead and be part of and organise very important campaigns on behalf of students, uh, such as the anti fees campaign, which is quite big on the national scale every single year. Um, it's also very important to uh, <coughs> ensure that students know what's going on in their own union and ensure that they know how to run for class rep, how to run for a sabbatical election, and how to be involved in their own union and they know where the money is being spent and what's it, what, what it's being spent on, what's actually going on on a regular basis. I think that's the role of campaigns. And why should students vote for you and I think that I've got a, a fair few new ideas to bring to the table in relation to campaigns and communications. I think that we need a new style uh, campaign to fight fees and to fight cuts to the grant and the general uh, austerity scene in education on campus. I think that there's been some key things left out of the anti-fees campaign. If you look at the anti-fees campaign in the United Kingdom, for example, there's they purposely go out of their way to say that this is also a fight against the uh, commercialisation of education, a fight against the free market uh, idea being put into into the education realm as well. And I think we need to say that as well, that we're against the increasing levels of uh, neoliberalisation of education. You know, education isn't just for to uh, help the economy, it's for to help students themselves and as develop as people and we're a community, not a market. Um, how do you feel I think there's been some interesting developments. I think that the uh, organisation around the anti fees march was quite good. Um, however, I think I would have done things a bit differently. Um, I don't think recently things have been very good at all. I don't think students were informed about how to go about running the sabbatical elections. I think that was quite poor. Uh, I think there was a good job done of encouraging students to get involved in the class rep elections. I think there was a record number of people running for class rep. Um, However, m my experience over the last few days getting signatures for nominations and stuff, students don't know who their campaign communications officer is, and I think out of all positions in the students' union, it's, it's crucial that they know who the communications officer is if that's if they're supposed to be told what's going on uh, in their own union. I don't think people know on a regular basis what's going on in their own union. You know. Uh, will you be voting for or against the introduction of the new constitution? I'll be voting against the introduction of the new constitution. And um, I feel it's far too bureaucratic. I feel it's creating too much, too many bureaucratic layers within the union. It's too much red tape, and it. I think the even the air about it when you're reading it is quite, uh, it's quite bland. It's quite uh, bureaucratic, very red tape. Uh, I think the, it, there's even more of a separation between the main student body and the union uh, councils and the union reps. Uh, I like the idea of it, however, of the, the commercialization of the, not commercialization, the uh, independence of the uh, ENS officer in relation to uh, differentiating between a uh, student position and, and an actual full time position. Um, I, I, I'll be voting against it because uh, there's a number of things in it that I don't like. I don't like the fact that the conveners or the PROs would be paid uh, at the discretion of the sabbatical officers. I don't like that it's quite uh, open to interpretation, you know, how, how much that these people would be paid. And, and when they'll be paid or whatever else. Um, so, so there's a few things in it that I don't like that I'll, I'll, be, I'll be rejecting. And also it removes the right to, of any student to call a union general meeting, which uh, I think is, is, you know, every union has one of those. Every union has a right for any member of that union to call a union general meeting, and I think that that needs to be kept in. Yeah, I don't agree with that either. Uh, I think that it, it's an important role. I think that there needs to be a campaign's position to ensure that, you know, as I said earlier, the, the role of a campaign's communications officer is to ensure that vigorous campaigns are run on behalf of students, and with the absence of a campaign's officer, you're not going to be able to do that. Do you so think the president can still watch out? Well, the pre president already has a, a full-time job, and I understand that when it comes to certain important issues like fees, that the, it, it seems to, like this year, it seems to be quite sli split between Brendan Lacey and Pat de Bruin, and that only makes sense. Um, Whoever the president has a whole range of other issues to to to. This year, like this year, when the organisation done when you resigned, as opposed to yeah. the president himself. So, like, is that really a job for him? So yeah, I, I don't think you just compare with your value on the plan. Well, I, I don't think it's right to have a. I think things need to be decentralised on onto campuses across the country as well. It's not just right to have 
at one office in Dublin, you know, coordinating the whole campaign on a national level. I think it only makes sense to have local coordinators here who know their own college campuses and know their own students and how they can do it. Um, uh, to be honest, this is one of the things that I am myself quite on the fence. So some of my friends are no, we think we should leave, and some of my friends are no, we, we should definitely stay. Uh, I myself, I see. Uh, last year, I would have said no, we have to stay in the USI. Uh, we need a national governing body. We need a national body to fight on behalf of students, to lobby on behalf of students, and ensure that students' interests are kept uh, on a national level and a united level. Uh, however, the, the way things have gone more recently, it's, it's, it's become quite messy. Um, US, we're paying far too much for USI. The new USI constitution and how it was sneakily passed through, I don't think it uh, reflects well at all on, on, on unions, in the country, on student unions in the country at all. Um, uh, in the current circumstances, I would say at the moment we need maybe a break from USI, and then uh, USI needs an entire vigorous restructuring uh, to ensure that students uh, needs are kept at, at, at a national level and I don't think the current USI is doing that well. Okay. Uh, say, what is your stance on fees? I'm against fees. Uh, sure. And yes. say in the referendum that will come up during the next election, if the union policy is to you know, have a crash or whatever else, if it is not pro free fees, what I, will you be able to follow through with that like brief with conviction given that you have yourself Um, well, I will be canvassing during the exact elections to, to ensure students vote uh, in line with that, and I think that students will vote in line. I think that this is just the fact that it's a referendum going through is that, uh, even more of a sign that there's a disparity between what students actually want and what the you know the, the SU exec thinks students might want. You know, I think that uh, that was shown in DCU earlier this year as well. Um, that you know the, the SU exec thought maybe students might want to vote for a graduate tax or, or a student loan scheme, but they didn't. They voted for free education, uh, and they wanted their they mandated their unit to fight on behalf of free education. Uh, I would have confidence to think that the students at UCD will do the same thing. And um, in short of that, uh, if if I got elected and that wasn't the case, uh, I would like to think that I would still uh, fight for free education. You know, um, I I don't understand the idea of. But if, your mandate, if your mandate is to fight for whatever the union, as whatever, however many people voted for, mm. if your mandate is to support that scheme, can you really support free fees at all? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, I would be able to. You know, uh, you know, I know my ma my mandate would be what people vote for. It. That's in my manifesto. Yeah. You know, my manifesto says I believe in free fees, and people would be voting for that, and and uh, that's what I, I would continue to. I think it's uh, even more important uh, the fact that there's a major economic crisis, a financial crisis in this country, and people are feeling pain on a vast scale. Uh, people's parents are unemployed like they never have before in the last 20 years. Um, now it's important. Yeah, well, I don't think we should uh, mould our policy to fit the interests of the overall economic circumstances. We should mould our policy to fit the interests of the students that we represent. Uh, and I do, I do think it's it's real, really realistic. You know, I don't think we should be taking a step back. All other countries across the world are taking a step forward in this regard because they're seeing the impact on the students uh, and the members. And um, I think it only makes sense that you mould your policy to the interests to the people you represent. And at the moment, people are demanding, uh, from my experience, people want uh, things to be easier on them. So obviously, think people want their, don't want the reg registration fee going up. And we've seen that with the huge turnouts in the student protests uh, this year and last year, that people, they just don't want it. You know, people want things to be easier on them. People want employment. People want, don't want to have to leave the country. People want uh, cheaper education, uh, cheaper books, cheaper everything, you know, so uh, because they're, people have less money. So I think we need to mm -hmm. that that's we need to maintain our current stance and keep fighting for it. Just in general, student body did say vote in favour of the graduate tax or a graduate loan scheme. Would you be able to support that or? Um, 
well, as I said already, like uh, people would vote for me on the basis of my manifesto. Okay. Um, yeah. But are you still not compelled to follow the mandate of the council? Well, I'd be mandated to follow the uh, well, what the student population say. Uh, the, how many people are in the actual exact? You know, I mean, there's nothing compared to the twenty-three thousand students that are in the city. Um, the annual anti fee protest. Yeah, uh, I think that it's yeah, it's too formulaic. I think it's too. Um, it seems like it's becoming a chore almost. That you know, the US are like right that time of year again. Let's organise some protests. I think we need a new style approach uh, entirely towards the anti fees campaign. Uh, and I think that would involve having a, a maybe a, a January February protest, uh, di different different sorts of actions around around the country at different times. And um, I think. Uh, well, I think the Minute Students Union this year like, did, did something quite interesting when they occupied their local Fine Gael PD's office. And I think uh, little things like that I mean, in, in the right context. Do you support occupations in general as a sort of protest move? Yeah, I, I would, but uh, I think that they need to be done in conjunction with other things. And I th don't think that's right for um, student unions or student union reps, uh, full timers, to do things with that kind of student members either. Like, and one of the problems that a lot of people I know in Minute had w with that, with the student union doing that, the fact that it was kind of them by themselves without any communication. And that would be my job as communications officer to ensure that students know what their own union are doing. And it's likewise with uh, Guy Redmond and three other uh, USI officers or SU presidents that occupy the Department of Jobs last year. Uh, that kind of thing is, isn't anti fees strategy. Like that's, you know, that's not what students in, you know, England are doing some students in Greece or Chile or anywhere else that where anywhere else the students are engaging in, in, in the fight back against their government are, are doing. And uh, I think that we need to seriously rethink our strategy. You know, every single year there's a lobby uh, where I asked Colin Murphy, the deputy president of USI last year, are you still going to maintain this lobbying stance? And he said, well, yeah, of course we are. Basically what we do is we go in there and we try and educate politicians on the benefit of free education. Like that this, you know, if, if they don't agree with free education, then I mean, someone, a student sitting in front of them, presenting them with a folder isn't going to change their opinion in that regard.